from a gigantic panda may facing off with Mingzilla to deleted Four Town scenes and a rival red panda cousin. The original version of Pixar's Turning Red was going to be very different. Yippee Kaye, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing the alternate ending of Turning Red and the incredible deleted scenes and storylines you never got to see. Spoilers ahead, of course, so take care. One of the most spectacular moments in Turning Red is when Ming's red panda form is finally revealed. She's cute! I told you she was big! That big? Despite Panda May's tiny size in comparison, she's still able to knock Mingzilla out. However, this final face-off was originally going to be quite different, with a giant red panda May going up against her mother in a Godzilla vs King Kong style clash. In the first draft of the story, Meilin's red panda grew and shrank in size depending on how emotional she got, and the idea was that by the very end, Mei would get so angry with her mother that she'd become similarly gigantic. What would have led to Mei's massive monster-sized emotions was, as in the final film, Ming utterly humiliating her in front of her beloved boy band, after already having embarrassed her daughter in front of her classmates at school and the store. You are in big trouble, young lady! The two ginormous pandas would have then gone on to fight in the streets of Toronto in an epic kaiju-esque battle. The problem, however, was that when the filmmakers presented their idea, there were lots of questions about why Mei would grow to such a size, and coming up with consistent rules as to how or why she'd grow to different sizes at different times ended up being too complicated and confusing. In the end, the filmmakers decided to simplify May's transformation so that she simply poofed into a single-sized panda regardless of the level of her emotions, which perhaps made Ming's transformation into the absolutely humongous Mingzilla even more surprising, given we'd only seen May's panda up until that point. By the way, The Art of Turning Red Book also has an interesting storyboard of another deleted version of the ending, where a helicopter news reporter can be seen reporting on the panda showdown in the streets below followed by a shot of Mingzilla grabbing Panda Mei Lin and getting ready to spank her, possibly for the twerking show she put on. Also in the book is a version of Mei's panda where she appears to have what's called fire fur, the ability to conjure fire whenever she's angry, which you can see also in this concept art of Mayzilla squaring off against her mother with fiery red paws. A little of this fiery design might have ended up in the look of Ming's panda with her spiky, almost flame-like tail. Turning Red director Domi Shi has said that there were eight different versions of the story before they settled on the final one, and in another early draft, Ming was actually pleased about Mei's ability to turn into a red panda because the panda was a good luck charm for the temple. In this version, Ming turned Panda Mei into a tourist attraction for the shrine that she could monetize by having her pose for pictures and put up with other stuff like being a therapy red panda. Some aspects of this did end up in the final film, when, after the destruction of the Sky Dome, Panda Mei uses her newfound fame to help raise funds for its reconstruction. And of course, in the main part of the movie, Mei uses her panda at school to raise money for tickets to see Four Town. According to Shi, the first version of the movie was really kooky and a goofy screwball kind of comedy that featured a villain by the name of Benny Blacktooth. Benny was a gangster in Chinatown who was trying to take over the temple when it started running out of money, but they later realised the story was getting far too complicated and veering away from its core, which was a fantastical tale about adolescence. There's an interesting clip in the Turning Red trailer which didn't make it into the final movie of Mei Lin and her friends marching through school with placards, a megaphone and a little drum, protesting environmental issues. Disney's documentary about the making of the film also has footage of the girls falling to the floor as part of the protest, with the other students looking on. Power to the, people! the Art of Turning Red book also has designs of Mei holding up banners that read Respect your Mother Earth and Hens Should Be Free. And there's another deleted scene of Mei watching TV with Miriam, Priya and Abby, and then declaring her sudden love for boy band Four Town. I didn't even like Four Town last year, but now they're literally the greatest thing that's ever happened to me! Another deleted storyline had Panda Mei officiating at a wedding. But just before that, I want to thank this video sponsor Fetch Rewards, an incredibly easy to use free app that gives you rewards on everything you buy. It doesn't matter what you purchase or where you shop, you too 
too can make out like a money-making panda. Just grab your receipts and start scanning to earn points in just a few seconds. Any receipts will work, from Walmart to ones from your local farmer's market or from even just filling up with gas. There's hundreds of different types of rewards you can claim with your points, from Amazon and Visa gift cards to free movie tickets at your local theatre, vouchers for your favourite restaurants and fashion retailers. Thanks to my opening bonus and just the few receipts I've scanned so far, I can already get one of these annual magazine subscriptions completely free. You can also get rewards for your online shopping like Amazon. And if you tap my link in the video description and use the code FLIX, you'll get 3,000 bonus points for free. Many thanks again to Fetch for sponsoring this video. According to the artist, this early concept art shows a Chinese mafia wedding, which I think means it was part of the Benny Blacktooth gangster storyline. This makes sense given all the dark suited types hanging around the banquet hall. It's curious that despite the elaborate setup, there's no guests, and it looks like there are some beads of sweat on May's forehead, like she's especially nervous. Plus, the bride does not look happy at all. Another intriguing detail is the two merfolk and tanks on either side of the bride and groom. In another iteration of the story, there was a rivalry and generational family feud between the Lees and May's cousin and aunt, who could both also turn into pandas. In that version, Grandma also died, and May met her extended family at the funeral. That storyline was scrapped because it ended up becoming too plot-focused and complex, rather than centering on the experience of a young girl growing up. Although we did, of course, see Malin's drawings of Devon in her notebook, there's several other pages we never got to see when May ripped them up after her mum embarrassed her at the Daisy Mart. Pixar, however, have released the sketches from the whole notebook online, which reveal extra pages such as one with Devon as a centaur, possibly a nod to Onward, and another of May and her three friends dressed like the protagonists from the hit anime series Sailor Moon. Domi Shi has talked about the influence of Sailor Moon on turning red, including the pastels and the dreaminess of the nightscapes, and some early concept art reveals some more deleted Sailor Moon Easter eggs such as this one on the wall of May's bedroom. There's also Luigi and Toad from the Super Mario franchise in this pic, which didn't make it into the final movie. Another interesting detail in this early concept art is that May's name was originally Faye. I've not seen an official explanation given for the name change, but it's quite possible it was altered to avoid repeating the name of the protagonist Fei Fei from Netflix's Over the Moon, which was released in 2020. The title of the movie Turning Red has numerous layers of meaning referring both to May's literal discovery that she can transform into a red panda, a metaphor also for an adolescent girl getting her period for the first time. Did the red peony bloom? No! Maybe? <gasps> and the sense of shame and embarrassment that May feels whenever her overbearing mother intervenes in her life outside home, and her anger and rebellion against that. Plus, Red is a lucky colour. However, as revealed in the Disney Plus documentary, there were also a lot of different titles considered for the story. Many of these were intriguing puns, such as a notorious RPG, Red Panda Girl, a play on one of rapper Biggie Small's stage names, the notorious B.I.G. My Neighbour Toronto, a reference to Studio Ghibli's My Neighbour Totoro, PMS, Panda Mayhem Story, with PMS also standing for Premenstrual Syndrome, and Mayhem also possibly being a play on May's name. Red and Redder is likely a nod to the movie Dumb and Dumber. Red to me probably refers to the expression Dead to me, coincidentally also the title of an awesome Netflix series. And these ones here are another example of May's original name, Faye. Some other fun deleted scenes in the Art of Turning Red book include this one of May in her den under the bed relaxing to music, Red Panda May and Friends reading at a store or library. In this scene we see that May's favourite boy band was called Boys in Streets, likely a mashup of Boys to Men and the Backstreet Boys. There was also a scene of Ming and May crying while watching a movie or TV show, and this piece makes me wonder whether May had a baby sibling in another version. And then there was an extra A113 Easter egg in the Skydome Stadium that wasn't in the final film. There's even more amazing concept art from the movie in The Art of Turning Red book, so I'll add a link below for where you can get the book with free worldwide shipping. I really loved the finished film, but do you wish any of these scenes or alternate storylines had been included? Let me know in the comments below. Next, tap left to discover all the secret symbolism and clues to the ending hidden in Turning Red. And if you enjoyed this video, then do leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thanks for enjoying this movie with me, and hope you have a marvellous movie-loving week. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!